part of that trapezius. Now what we see with that is that this trapezius has this kind of hook in here, like this, or this corner. So as this comes up, we see that same corner in here. So what's happening is that as he pulls his arm forward, we're actually seeing his scapula twist in like this. So you can see that corner to corner, these things are lining up. And this is what's defining for us inside of all this complexity. We have this corner and this corner. That's showing us where the other scapula is. So you have to kind of look for things you can recognize and build around those in order to um, to figure out what the hell is going on here. Um, and then below the, whatever this is, your trapezius, we know that those back muscles swing up from the hips. So we're actually seeing the trapezius here. This second bump that comes down, that's actually the back muscle, the erector spinae. And then here we're seeing this pull in on the inside and he's kind of bending it around the rib cage here. And then we see it break and he's kind of bending it then against the um, obliques here. So despite that double bump, this is actually the same form rolling in and we have the oblique swinging around here. Uh, this pulls into that sacrum and then this stuff comes out and you can see at the hips, he calls out that great trochanter, so that big bump coming in. And then right around that we see those three volumes. So we see up here, gluteus medius, right? In the front, this is just that tensor muscle, kind of stretching in like this. And then in the back, we see the gluteus maximus swinging in. And you can see he shows us also that step in on the outside where it kind of pulls to the side of the leg like that. So that bump there, that's actually part of the gluteus maximus. Um, and then pulling around here, we get you know, we have a tiny sliver of his pecs underneath his arm, and then we pick up his abdominals here, twisting in. So the key here is that you want to break into the form with your line here. So again, don't think of it just as the outline, but all these areas like where the obliques meet the top of the, um, the pelvis here, where the rib cage, or the, in this case, the abdominals kind of pull into the rib cage here. Those are all areas I'm going to separate. So when you're drawing the torso out, we're usually looking for breaks at the one, the two, and the three. So with your line work, you want that to be that transition area from that hard line into that soft line here. Um, and then we're gonna get his abdominals coming out here, pulling back into his hips here. So this would give us that hip box. And on his upper arm, this is part of the, this is actually part of the clavicle twisting around here. So we're seeing that little bump in there. And then we're gonna get his deltoid moving around that form. So this is pulling in, swinging back, uh, pulling back in and it's actually, and so on the scapula, we're seeing this form in here would be the infraspinatus. And below that, we can really see that terrace major sneaking in under the arm here. And that's gonna pull in. And then below that, we see the edge of the, um, whatever this is here. You guys remember what this is called? <coughs> nope, that's the wrong answer. <laughs> <laughs> um, that's the, uh, this is the latissimus, the lats, right? Underneath the scapula here. Um, now, as you bring in tone, so we're gonna approach it the same way we're doing in class today, where we're trying to define, again, the boundaries between light and dark. And you'll notice, again, I'm not going in and hatching everything out, but I'm using the same technique we're using in class, using kind of that softer edge on the inside of the form, using my harder lines on the outside of the form. Uh, so you, you don't have to sit there for hours and hours like hatching everything, um, although you can do that too. Um, but uh, so here, I'm really just thinking of the top plane of that cylinder. So as I bring that shadow in, I'm gonna think about this top plane and then this down plane. So I'm gonna define the shadow shape here. We get the front edge of the deltoid, this middle section here, and then it steps back and across. So I'm doing the same deal where I'm trying to identify, you know, what's in light, what's in dark, or what's in shadow here, this comes in. We get this little cast shadow over his lats here, and then the volume of his lats roll in like this. 
we get a cast shadow over his rib cage here, and then we feel his rib cage dive in like this. And you're gonna find that the shadow, again, is just reinforcing what the line is doing. So at every break of the form, you're usually gonna find a break in the shadow here. And then this pulls over, he, he gives us the front edge of the obliques here, and then the rest of this knocks back in shadow, like this. And you know, for now we can just simplify this. Let's just knock this all back here. Uh, and then coming up here, uh, this rolls up along the edge of his trapezius, and then we feel this turn away of the other side of his trapezius, and then we feel the edge of his, whatever this is, um, this kind of tube here wrapping away. So we can knock all this back here. Um, and then it's about coming in and, you know, certain areas in here, this will be kind of um, softer. So this might roll into the rib cage here. We, we get that grouping again of these ribs hanging off of that shadow. Now this pulls down. So in here, as we define these other values or these other shapes, I should say, um, these forms I'm going to define with that soft side of my pencil, right? Unless I see a really big break in the form um, or, you know, you just have to do exactly what he's doing with the line. So here we have that line coming over and then it disappears. Um, you know, he's bringing in a more kind of, uh, or a stronger edge here on the edge of the um, scapula. He's breaking this line here and going from line into tone. So we get that transition. So these are all things you want to look out for on your, your drawings here. And now, you know, this is something I would do like before going into class or before doing my homework. Um, do a study like this because this will give you kind of a filter to see through as you guys are doing it from life, right? You're going to find like, oh yeah, I see a similar shape as to on the model that I saw, you know, when I was doing that, looking at Michelangelo or whoever. Um, and then you can incorporate that same approach or that same technique into your life drawing, right? How did Michelangelo draw the top of that shoulder? He, he kind of rounded this off and then he drew this double bump out here. Um, and then, you know, he, he drew that terrace major stretching in and, oh, I see that on the model, so I can bring it in the same way that I saw on that one drawing I did just now. Um, <laughs> Or, or whenever you did it. Um, and that's kind of the idea. And you know, honestly, this is basically how I learned a lot of anatomy was I would sit down with this. Um, I wouldn't have this, just this out, but I would get out all my anatomy books and I'd go through each bump and be like, okay, what bump is this? What is this? What is this? And then I, I'd go back and reference it through my books um, to kind of figure out what that stuff is. So that's a big part of what the master studies assignment is about is you have the time to kind of slow down with each pose and kind of think about what each form is. Get your handouts out, get your books out, and kind of um, reference these things, right? Because it's one thing, you know, I could go down the entire figure and tell you where everything is, but unless you go home and like sit down and really study it, then, um, and not just drawing out from the, the model, but you know, getting a book out and like really looking at what the forms are, um, you know, you're not really going to get it. Um, and anatomy is not one of those things that you kind of get overnight, but it's kind of an ongoing process where you learn a little bit. And it's like, oh yeah, I can see this form now. And then you kind of move on and then you, you come back to it and it's like, oh, actually there's this form and then there's also this form. There's kind of a subtlety to certain things. Um, so you gradually kind of learn it over time by being exposed and constantly working at it rather than just getting it like that, right? Or even just taking this class once, um, it's actually, it's not enough. Um, the, the college structure doesn't actually work for learning drawing because uh, it's not, a, you don't just take a class and suddenly you're a master, right? But it's something you have to constantly be working at and, and reinforcing. So um, something to keep in mind. But anyway, so this is how I want you guys to start to approach your master's studies. And it is a two-stage drawing, right? So. I am um, starting with my lay-in, right? I'm doing that in fairly lightly. And then on top of that, I'm building out you know, more structure 
And then on top of that, I'm working into my line and working into my tone and stuff. Um, but again, these don't have to be labored where you're like, you know, you're sitting there hatching all day, um, exactly how they are. But it's more about looking at the overall structure of things and looking at how they, um, how they define certain things, what things do they pull out, what things do they push back, how do they define the light and shadow, things like that. Um, and again, you know, you look at the diagram and then you look here at this hip and you can see exactly those forms, you know, one, two, three, lining up around that great trochanter. How do you draw it on the figure? Well, you know, if you see those forms faintly on the figure, you can define it in a similar way that Michelangelo has done here. So we look at, or you know, we, we listen to the lectures and stuff to figure out what to draw, and then we look at other artists to figure out how to draw it, right? Um, and you know, beyond this class, it's not just like the old masters, but you can look at you know, other artists that you're into. Uh, don't just look at their work, but, but copy them. You know, do an analysis to figure out what they're actually doing and why they, why they work, why do you like them? You know, um, that's a big thing. Or if you get books, don't just look at the pictures, but read the books, um, <laughs> read the words. Those will give you insight into the context behind what an artist is doing, why they're doing something. And when you learn why they're doing it, then, then you can incorporate that into your own work, you know. Um, that was a big revelation to me, you know, for a long time. I collected all these books, and then I just look at the pictures, and then one day I was like, I was kind of bored, and I was like, oh, let's read this book. <laughs> and I was like, oh, shoot, like, that's what they were thinking? Um, you know, I had no idea, but, so, um, yeah, it's, it's, it's more about the thought process than it is about the physical kind of end result, you know. Um, so, anyway, do you guys have questions on this for, for your sketchbook?